Welcome viewers. Today is another great day, as today I feature a new TV box from Magic C, one of my favorite developers and top producers of quality TV boxes in the industry. Taking the spin is their latest release called the Magic C N5 Max, and this is not the same box from 2019, this is the new model running on the Amlogic S905X3 CPU. I know you're excited to see what this new model has to offer, so stay tuned, a full review is up next. So I'm back. And this is the box that it's shipped in. The box is well labeled with the Magic C logo and some features printed to the side. Below the box you have some specifications. It says that the CPU is the Amlogic S905X3 quad-core 64-bit ARM Cortex-A55. The GPU is the Mali G31 MP2. It has 4GB of DDR4 memory, and it comes with 64GB of EMMC flash internal storage. It says that it can play 4K UHD videos up to 60 frames per second, and supports formats including H.265 HEVC 10-bit and H.264 decoders. It also shows that you have USB 3.0 support, and it has SB diff digital audio output. To the top right corner it says that the box has dual band Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support. So without further ado, I will do a quick unboxing. So this is what's in the box. You have the N5 Max TV box itself. You get this infrared learning remote. It's a really nice remote, but it applies point-and-click infrared technology, with a mouse cursor controlled by these direction keys, so it doesn't have an air mouse feature. To the back it says that it's a learning remote, which means that you can face it at another remote like your TV remote, and follow the instructions to program it to control your TV also. But if you want mouse-like features to navigate your box, you would have to purchase a Bluetooth air mouse or a mini touchpad keyboard separately. You get one HDMI cable a 5 volts 2 amps power adapter and a user's manual and now a look at its design and what ports we have available on this box the body is made of plastic with the magic c logo and model printed to the top to the back you have one hdmi 2.1 port one ethernet lan port at 1000 megabits per second you have one optical audio sb diff port one audio video port and a dc power input to one side you have one USB 2.0 port, one USB 3.0, and a microSD card reader. There is nothing on the other side. To the front, you have an LED clock display. And below the box you have lots of ventilation holes. I will now connect it to my TV and capture card and continue. So the box is connected, and when you power on the box you have an M-Box boot-up animation for a few seconds, then you are taken directly to the launcher. So this is Magixie's new launcher, and it consists of these large main icons that cannot be changed, and a shortcuts bar for adding shortcuts, by simply clicking on the add button and selecting which apps you would like to add or remove. To the top you have a one-click cleanup button for freeing up system resources by closing apps running in the background. Different from the X2 model, this new launcher comes with a navigation and status bar, and it can also be activated by pressing the menu button on the remote. However, the top bar lacks the pull-down feature with system controls. Features of this firmware include. In the special settings area called Droid Settings you have the following options. 4K resolution up to 2160p at 60Hz. Dolby Vision, with the option to set priority between video and graphics. HDR display settings. And as in some of my recent videos, disable the HDR to SDR option as it causes the screen colors to look washed out. Audio settings, with the option to select the audio output medium. Power key options. And CEC control options. In the general settings area you have another special settings called Magic C settings. In this area you have a root switch feature. And hardware monitor features. Also under general settings under sound settings, you have the Dolby Atmos and DTS audio options. In the apps section they have included the AirScreen app. 
Chrome browser, a file browser, Kodi Media Player, Movie Player, the MX Player, Netflix, the Google Play Store, a wallpaper app and the Android TV version of YouTube. So to complete my review I will install my usual set of apps and continue. To begin the first segment I will first check to see if the box is rooted. The Root Checker app shows that the box is rooted, running on Android 9 operating system. This is great news for apps that require root permissions to work, such as keymapping apps and casting apps. At the same time it does not augur well for apps that require the box not to be rooted. So to facilitate apps that require the box not to be rooted, it comes with a root switch feature. One thing I really like about the root switch in this box is that you don't have to restart the box to activate or remove the root feature, it happens instantly. That's a first in the industry. Next, I show its DRM information. It shows that the H96 Mini has Google Widevine Level 3 with no HDCP protection. This is the case for most TV boxes, as it limits the use of Netflix and Amazon Prime Video to basic 480p quality. Only boxes running on the Android TV version of the operating system, with Widevine Level 1 and HDCP protection can play Netflix in HD and 4K quality. DRM does not affect alternative forms of streaming. Let's take a look at its system and hardware information. The manufacturer it says here is 5 Max, which I doubt very much, because the startup animation showed the M-Box logo, which means the manufacturer is either Magic C or the makers of M-Box. The model is the N5 Max. It comes with 4GB of RAM which is DDR4 memory, and this is the remainder from the 64GB of storage after the Android installation and all the apps installed. The Bluetooth version is 4.0 indicated by the 4 Plus, and this information was taken from the Magic C product page. The CPU, which is the Amlogic S905X3, is a 64-bit quad-core ARM Cortex-A55 CPU running up to 1.9 GHz in 32-bit mode. Below here it shows that the box has support for only 32-bit ABIs, allowing it to run only 32-bit applications. The display is powered by the ARM Mali G31 processor, with a refresh rate of 60Hz and OpenGLES version 3.2 which is really good for gaming. Under network, it shows that the box has dual band 2.4 and 5GHz Wi-Fi support. Under Android information, it shows that the operating system is Android 9 Pi, and it also shows that the box is rooted. Under thermal information, I expanded this bit of information to now show the temperature running in idle state in normal room temperature, and the temperature when a cooling fan is applied. So in normal room temperature without air conditioning, the box runs between 50 and 60 degrees Celsius. When a cooling fan is applied, the temperatures drop between 40 and 50 degrees. With air conditioning, the temperatures drop below 40 degrees. So from my experience, the safe normal operating temperature for a TV box is between 45 and 65 degrees Celsius given that the box is placed in a well-ventilated area. The box comes with codecs needed for the playback of 4K videos with digital audio formats, and I will test to see if it has Dolby features in a moment. And that's it for system and hardware information, and now let's take a look at its benchmarks. First I have the results from the A1 SD Bench app that measures RAM copy speed and internal storage read and write speeds. The results show that the new Magic C N5 Max has a RAM copy speed of 3139 megabytes per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 149 megabytes per second and a write speed of 93. These results are good, and are consistent with other S905X3 boxes. Next, I have the results of the Wi-Fi and LAN speed test. The results showed that the box was able to hit the maximum download and upload speed of my internet package of 100 megabits per second on the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi bands. The LAN port maxed lower by 60% due to having a max bandwidth of 100 megabits per second. Magic C has indicated that they have released a second N5 Max model with the 1000 megabits per second LAN port, see the link in the description area. So in this model, for the best internet speed use the both Wi-Fi bands. Next, I show the results of the Antutu benchmark. The latest Antutu version 8 is compatible with this box, because it has OpenGLES 3.2 support. So the Magic C N5 Max got a score of 75,170. This is a good score and it should make a good entry on the chart. 
Next is the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark. This app runs a series of timed tasks, and it measures how fast the CPU completes each task in single-core and multi-core modes. The new Magic CN5 Max got a score of 769 single-core and 2137 multi-core. These scores are also good scores and consistent with other S905X3 boxes. The final benchmark is the TreatyMark Gamers benchmark. This app consists of a series of graphics tests, specially tailored to test Android devices with various types of GPUs and OpenGLES versions, and is a good indicator when determining which device has good graphics rendering and gaming performance. Treaty Mark has since updated their app to now indicate what benchmarks are suited for your device and which of their tests are unsupported. The N5 Max has opened GLES version 3.2, so Treaty Mark is saying that the iStorm Extreme benchmark is unsupported because it is suited for devices running open GLES version 2.0 and lower. I decided to still use the data because S905X3 boxes have not yet maxed out that test, as we have seen in the S922X boxes. So the new Magic CN5 Max got a score of 5,479 in the Ice Storm Extreme test, 510 in the Slingshot test, and 333 in the Slingshot Extreme test. This box does not have Vulkan support, so the Slingshot Extreme test is not 100% compatible. These are good scores for this box, and it should place well on the chart. So after entering the scores on the new chart. The new N5 Max looking pretty good to the top of the chart in position number 1, but it's still too early to start really making some comparisons. So for now it will enjoy position number 1 till the big boys are ready to show their face. You can view this chart in full spreadsheet format where you can interact with it and compare scores, see the link in the description area. To start the next segment that highlights special features and entertainment options, I will first check to see if alternative launchers work on this box. As usual I installed the ADW Launcher 2 which is a popular compatible alternative launcher for Android 9 operating system, and it works perfectly with all features working. I also included by request, the option to use live wallpapers. Live wallpapers don't work on the default launcher but works fine on alternative launchers. And this is quite attractive I may add. Moving on to its movie streaming features, and this is what a TV box is supposed to look like. Most important on any TV box is the ability to stream movies and TV shows from both paid and free services. Most popular among the paid services is Netflix and Amazon Prime Video. These apps come pre-installed on the box, and they work by entering your existing account information. The challenge with running these premium services on most Android boxes is that they lack the required digital rights and security clearance to show in resolutions above 480p quality. The picture is still very clear and watchable, but you don't get HD or 4K quality. But Netflix and Amazon Prime only covers movies and TV shows. What about live TV, sports, news, premium cable channels, and all in HD quality without buffering? Well I have a really great solution for you. I would like to welcome and introduce to my viewers a new sponsor to this channel, with a premium yet very affordable IPTV service based in the US, running off of very fast servers with a huge selection of premium HD channels at a price you wouldn't believe. Introducing, Instaplay IPTV service. Instaplay unlike other IPTV services, understands the streaming and TV box community and has tailored their service in such a way that users don't have to pay extra ridiculous cost to use their service on as much as 4 TVs at a time on one account. Now that's a bargain. I have been using their service extensively for the past two days and I am really liking the simple yet innovative features of their app. The premium movie channels are mind-blowing, with channels I have never seen or heard of. When you browse to the USA Entertainment section, things really start to get crazy. You have every possible cable channel you can think about in HD quality, with buffering speeds the likes you have seen in Netflix and other premium services. Most of these channels have an EPG guide, and when I tell you their customer service is excellent, activating customers is super fast, it took me 5 minutes to install and activate their service. I don't mean to gloat, but my favorite feature is this multi-view feature that allows you to view up to 4 streams at a time. 
Of course you need fast internet for something like this, but when I tell you it's good it's good. You also have a huge selection of sports channels in HD quality, and to top it off you have a wide selection of channels from all major countries around the world and in various languages. I wish I could show the quality of some of their premium channels, but due to the risk of copyright violations one cannot. So in To access this exclusive promo code see the link in the description area. For alternative ways of streaming movies and TV shows in HD quality, I have installed all the top streaming APKs for 2020. Pre-installed on the box is the latest version of the Kodi Media Player, and it comes with some third-party add-ons that probably don't work. So I went ahead and replaced these add-ons by installing all my add-ons in one click from my backup file. To see how to create your own backup and how to restore in one click, see the link in the description area. For other ways of streaming movies and TV shows, APKs have now become the preferred choice over Kodi. I've already installed all top APKs for 2020, but in today's video I want to feature an APK that is not talked much about. It is unique and different from the others, and it's the best alternative to the Kodi Media Player. I'm speaking about the app called Streamio. Streamio is an app found on the Google Play Store. It is not a media player for playing self-hosted files like Kodi, but it adopts the same movie streaming and add-ons installation like Kodi. With Streamio there is no source and repository to install. Simply go to the add-ons section and install or remove which add-ons you want. What's even better, is that all your add-ons and viewing history are stored in the cloud, so no matter where you install the app, your information and installed add-ons are saved and ready for viewing once you log in with your email and password, how cool is that? The interface is outstanding, but I caution you not to install the porn add-ons if you have children or minors that can access the app, as there are no parental controls to block these add-ons. You can log out of the app in the settings area to prevent access, but please I advise again, parental control is advised. That's it for streaming, and I will feature another APK in my next video. Another important function of a TV box is its ability to play YouTube videos in 4K quality. The Magic CN5 Max comes with the Android TV version of YouTube pre-installed, and it's the only version along with the YouTube Smart TV version that plays up to 4K quality on TV boxes. I however urge you to update this version using the updates section on the Aptoid App Store, as the current version, though functional, only works with the stock remote and not mouse pointers. After you update the app, it will now allow mouse pointers to navigate its menu. As you can see, YouTube plays up to 4K quality on this box. I will now play some 4K videos in 10-bit HDR format off of a USB 3.0 flash drive to test its 4K quality playback capability. I also placed an overlay of the TV's top right corner to show the HDR icon as it appears on the TV.
and only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico but the head-to-head -head goal difference is what counts So the 4K videos at 60 frames per seconds played okay and the